there's this thing called spoon theory originally uh. coined by those with chronic illnesses if i'm not mistaken that helps explain why some seemingly simple everyday tasks can take more energy out of them than others who don't live with a chronic illness but it doesn't explain why. Sorry, isn't spoon theory just a way of describing how much energy you have left in terms of... It's like Dungeons and Dragons spell slots. Oh, I have like two level two spoons and, and one level three spoon. Isn't that what that sh is? It doesn't explain why you have that limitation or why it works that way. Spoon theory has also been a great visualization tool for those on the neurodivergent spectrum too. I don't think it is. I think it's terrible and comes off as... Holds up Spork, I am the Penguin of Doom. I think it loses just because of what it's called, and that it uses spoons. Because our disability is invisible. That's why it's important to keep in mind your daily limits to avoid- I think you know I'm autistic when you see me, personally. Avoid feelings of dysregulation. Anyone disagree? Or, as I like to call it, turning evil. Because when I'm overwhelmed by too many sensory problems, I- sh I torture my pets! No. Shut down. And any words that do escape my mouth are usually very blunt. Unlike this knife. That presentation, look. I would have presumed, I'm presuming Illimation is, is, a, is a progressive and cares about presentation of, uh, and representation of people with conditions. I feel like she makes people with autism look a bit murderoid there. Little bit murderoid there. All that? took a lot more spoons than we thought it would, which left Kermie and I rather low on spoons and a little evil. It feels like something that is meant, meant to help people explain to others their limitations is being used here, is being appropriated here, and being used to justify flaws that could be improved upon. Hi, I have autism. That means uh, if I run out of spoons, I get a little evil. <laughs> I think even for the people with conditions where it makes sense that they get fatigued and would want a way of describing how much energy they have, it being spoons works against them so hard. So, are you aware of the of the theory that autism is hypermasculinity? I believe uh, a viewpoint pioneered by Simon Baron Cohen, partially based on on evidence that it's connected to exposure to higher levels of testosterone in utero. What if she's masculinized and so can't understand fashion in the same way that I can't understand fashion? Because she, it looks like she's doing a similar thing to me where she looks like she makes the proportion of her torso, torso to her legs look really f***ed up by the sizing of the clothing. I do that as well. I make my torso look gigantic by having like longer, longer shirts and, and shorts and stuff. And I think she's doing what I do. Out of nowhere. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa hey. dude. Dude, why are you pushing? You pu if a child can throw two adults to the ground, I would not f with that child. You're going to die. That's a soup. That was the last f straw, baby. Straw sucked up all the energy I had left. Gone were our tips. Do you go off on a kid? What are you going to do? But I don't know, man. Just a bunch of people decked out in cringy Nintendo shirts at 8 a.m. Yelling at a Goomba of a man. Excuse me, no need to make it racial, all right? My boyfriend Kermit is not of the YouTube sphere, although he does enjoy watching. Look who showed up. ...and keeping up with certain creators. But Autism doesn't mean that a person is intellectually challenged. You can't assume they're intellectually challenged just because they say they have autism. But what you can do to check is look who they're subscribed to on YouTube or look at their viewing history. The autistic masking was turned up to like a hundred, which takes a lot of spoons that he doesn't always have ready. So he requested that next time we go to an event with a high volume of people in my industry. It's so I feel like I'm a top autist. I, I'm, a, I'm a powerful autism operator. You can wield it. It autism... Autism is a blunt knife you can sharpen, okay? You can use it, you can tap into it, and you can realize your lack of social intuition can be used to shrug off discomfort other people would instinctively feel. It's a curse because it makes it harder to engage when you want to engage, but the blessing is, if you want to disengage entirely 
from the instinctual feelings other people have. If you practice, you can turn it off and you can do literally anything without feeling scared, embarrassed, nervous. If there's a buffet, literally just take everything and do that without feeling nervous about doing it at all. And they'll just let it happen. You can just do it. You can just grab it, for instance. Yeah, and the anxiety is just overthinking the situation when really I should be just engaging and not putting up a mask or not doing... Not being so autistic. Um, <laughs> but you can't help that. <laughs> but I can't help it. I think these people are autistic or not. I think there's a bunch of people mind f***ing themselves because of internet autism content. Or oh, it just keeps going. Yeah. It's overflowing. No. <laughs> if I didn't control my... Do you, you don't want to f***ing know what me not controlling my impulses is. My id isn't my true self. My id is my id. Right? If I didn't temper myself at all, I would just be screaming all the time, in public, at people. And I already say too much about people in public. There was a really fat woman at the store with overalls, and I just turned to Luggy and I'm like, Yo, it's Tweedledee! Probably said it louder than I should have. But I don't know if she'd understand I was talking about her. You just have to find the right people who will accept you as you are, as you deserve to be. Thank you for watching my videos. There's a difference between someone who will accept you as you are and someone who will accept you, who will accept your immediate confrontation of who you claim to be and what that requires. Those are two different things. I will say though, I feel like I must be approachable. Because people are always asking me to get stuff off shelves for them. I'm prone to like comical or positive contact. Like, telling people their dogs are cool. Something I like a lot about my girlfriend is when she- when she's- when someone's being f annoying, she- she says it. And they hear her, and- <laughs> And you can see them, like, curl up a bit. Like, like, there was a lady- there was a lady at the bus stop who, after we'd been waiting for ages, pushed in front of us for the bus. And Lucky B was just talking about how rude she was. And the lady sort of deflated a little bit. And then when the bus door opened, she looked at us and was like, well, are you, are you going in? Are you going in or not? And my girlfriend was like, yes, but I'm going to wait for the people to come out first, obviously. Let them come out. And then my girlfriend's power move is after, after forcing the lady to wait for the people to come out. Because these, these bitches always try to push on while people are coming off and make it into a mess, right? Especially when it's old people. My girlfriend... Forced that woman to wait for everyone to come out and then said, go on then, get on the bus. <laughs> she got on the bus and didn't say anything else. <laughs> she gave her a lesson, a lesson in politeness. A lesson in politeness. You wait for them to come out of the bus and then you get on. <laughs> oh, this, I think this might be perfect. So spoon theory was mentioned here. In relation to autism, we have mom on the spectrum, spoon theory and autism, spoon theory and living with invisible challenges. There are conditions where it's definitely very important and it can be very helpful to be able to express your energy levels. All sorts of conditions that come accompanied with chronic fatigue, right? Um, conditions that come with the risk of bo what's called boom and bust, where if you do a small amount each day, you can continue to do a small amount each day. But if you overdo it one day, you might be out of commission for multiple days. I mean, chronic fatigue syndrome itself is an example of something where you can, you can get into a boom and bust cycle, stuff like that. So the idea of being able to communicate your energy and have some way of conceptualizing how much you, how much you can exert yourself in a day, that's good. Um, it being spoon theory in particular, I feel like is silly. On top of that, I think it's very easy to appropriate that. Take this thing where it's like, you have to respect spoon theory, it's serious, and then pervert it into a way to control people by making making your limitations sound like an objective thing they have to respect. Oh, when it may not be the case. Which I suspect occurs with many autistic individuals. Um, and it also seems like they're, they're reef factoring it to to be like steps towards an autistic meltdown rather than actual exhaustion or any concern about a boom and bust cycle but let's learn about it i'm autistic maybe i should use spoon theory
Each spoon is one hour of stream. How many spoons do I have today? We'll find out. <laughs> Each spoon is how many is is a spoonful of tears on my eyes. How long will my eyes last? In fact, according to specialists, you need energy in brackets spoons to sleep. So you need spoons to sleep. If your way of conceptualizing energy leads to you saying sentences like you need, I need spoons to sleep. I need spoons to sleep. I think you have to reassess the impact of your choice of lingo. Day to talk about spoon theory. You don't like your bow? You don't, what, you got a problem with Jojo Siwa? I decided to wear my- Weekly tips for autistic living. Weekly tips to not die if you're autistic. That kind of rules. That's really funny. Aut <laughs> The autistic realness thumbnail. Autistic realness. She's about to drop the hottest retired rap of 2024. Unedited, no makeup. Do I have to set myself on fire to be heard? 15 autistic quirks you didn't know you have. We're not recovering from making autism a lifestyle brand. Deus Ex Invisible Illness. <laughs> Christine was looking for a way to... Sh there are no set numbers of spoons. We don't know that an autistic person has a certain number of spoons and a non-autistic person has a certain number of spoons. We haven't done the research into spoon difference between autists and normals. <laughs> Shut up! I'm built different. I have ladles. You might also hear me use the term allistic, which means not autistic. So we don't know a particular number of spoons that we start the day with, okay? This is all kind of a way for you to visual- <laughs> this, is, this sounds like someone alpha testing Dungeons and Dragons and not being sure how to balance spell slots. <laughs> Americans use spoons instead of jewels. They, uh, they, they measure energy in sp equivalent spoons of corn syrup. So let me explain. So for me, brushing my teeth, for some reason, that always exhausts me. So for me, that's going to cost me <laughs> a whole spoon. That takes a lot of energy out of me. Before an all this- You're not autistic, you're just British. <laughs> There might be something totally random that costs you spoons that costs no- There might be something totally random that costs you spoons. Oh, I saw a penguin. Oh, thinking about that really tired me out. There goes a spoon. Oh. Maybe saying hi to the person at the crosswalk that helps your kid get safely across the school every morning. Maybe saying hi is exhausting to you and that takes a- God, I'm fucking exhausted. I saw a poor person. It really, really took it out of me. <laughs> Well, that wouldn't cost anything. One thing I really love about the spoon theory is that you get to determine how many spoons each activity costs <laughs> you, and nobody else can be like, no, are you sure about that? Let's say you're getting to the- Yeah, what's the implication here? Why would they be in a position to tell you no? Why would they know about it? Because this is actually a tool of control of other people. Sorry, you just have to accept that I'm gonna live like a slob, I'm out of spoons. Hmm, do this commitment? Nah, I'm out of spoons. At the end of the day, and you've only got three spoons left, but you know you've got to bathe the kids, you know you've got to make dinner, and you know you- Nick Rakita's just autistic, not a cokehead. He ran out of spoons. To be fair, he was using them to scoop coke, but... So to be fair as well, I'm sure doing coke gives you, like, ten more spoons at least. As you practice using the spoon theory in your own life, you'll kind of figure out what it looks like, what it feels like when you don't have very many spoons left, and you'll figure out how it feels to regenerate more spoon energy. You'll figure out- Again, if you're getting to the point where you're saying sentences like this, something's gone wrong. Today we're gonna work on generating a, a ball of spoon energy that you can fire at someone else to recharge at them. I do we need to work on methods of regenerating spoon energy. Something's gone wrong with your lingo if you're saying that line. No, it shouldn't happen. Ludicrous on its face. My kids, they work so hard to stay focused and engaged at school. I'm pretty sure they use most of their spoons at school. So it's helpful for me to understand that when they get home... <laughs> the gay agenda is taking their spoons. They're, sp they're spending on their all their spoons learning about anal sex! They have to... 
they're not going to have a whole lot of spoons left to give. And it's important that I help. The government is taking all my children's spoons. Their energy is a resource. So as you become lower on spoons, things cost you more because you're operating with a lower amount of energy. Oh. So something like picking the kids up from school might not. That's it. I'm making a roguelite video game. It's going to be called Spoon Theory, and it's going to be really hardcore. It's going to have that uh, catastrophe cascade baked into it. You know, where once something starts going wrong, things go wrong more. When you're on low spoons, you spend more spoons. And then when you're out of spoons, you turn evil and everyone turns on you. It might be important to give your child unstructured time when they get home. You might let okay. them go run around outside. You might let them zone out on video games for a little bit just to... You're hyper-structuring extremely normal things. What would you normally have your kid doing? I guess homework. Isn't it normal to, like, let a kid chill for a bit and then be like, all right, it's seven, or, like, after dinner you do your homework or something? So I feel like after dinner making your kids do homework is a good one to make sure they have food in their belly when they do it. Oh, people who actually have disabilities and issues communicating? Yeah, for sure, for sure. As I was saying, it's it's different in that instance. I feel th I still think using spoons is real silly. A term has been created called spoony, and some people yeah. use that term spoony to refer to being disabled, differently abled, and it's almost kind of like a secret language instead of saying <laughs> Get the f out of here, you spoonoid. Let's go. A new slur just dropped. New slur that no one knows about yet has dropped. We're free to say it. Get out, Spoonie. Look at that f***ing Spoonie. <laughs>